Good evening, Beacon fans. It's a time for a brand new season of Beacon Volleyball. No more COVID mandates to worry about, at least not right now. We will cross our fingers and knock on every panel of wood down here on the court. But for now, it's just time for some good old fashioned volleyball as Eastern Nazarene College pays a visit to your beacons on this Wednesday night here in downtown Boston, just south of the great capital of Boston, Massachusetts. As we get this ready to get this one underway, these teams have already faced off against three opponents this season. Eastern Nazarene College hosting their own early season tournament where they went 3-0 UMass Boston taking a trip to Susquehanna coming up 0 for 3 on the weekend. But that said, it is the early part of the season. There are a lot of new faces. There are some returning faces that we'll take a look through as this preview goes on. My name is Mason Stout. Pleasure to, pleasure to welcome you in here to LittleEastConference.tv, the Beacon Broadcast Network. The first broadcast of the season for volleyball, just second of the season as we had some women's soccer, which we'll show you some highlights of in just a few minutes. Let's take a look at the season preview for your beaks. Mentioned that there's a couple of players returning, a lot of new faces, but a couple notables. Allie Dean, who will do a lot of the libero work, a lot of defensive specialist position for this team. And Taryn Brogel, who will be your chief attacker, and she will be our highlighted player in your matchup to watch in just a moment. Beacons picked to finish third in the Little East Conference preseason poll. 51 points, including a couple of first place votes, warranted after they went through the Little East Conference championship last season. Came in not necessarily expecting too much in that tournament and then ended up knocking off Eastern Connecticut State to take home the title in the automatic bid in the NCAA tournament. Beacons would go on to lose in straight sets to Haverford in their first match of that tournament. But 13 underclassmen, eight first-year players, and you have a new interim head coach as well, Calliope Devaralos, and that will be an obvious player to watch, not a player on the court, but player on the sideline to watch for the Beacons. Whenever you bring in a new coaching staff, whenever it's someone who has that interim title as she was brought on last minute to lead this program, it's going to be interesting to see the little subtle tweaks that she has to put in effect as she gets her team to respond to her new leadership style. Moving on from that, mentioned that we have that matchup to watch that features Taryn Brogel. It's two powerful hitters. Brogel, 14 kills on a 235 hitting percentage. As a team, they struggled hitting wise over the course of the weekend. We'll take you through what that stat exactly means as the course of the broadcast goes on. But 14 kills across the three matches. Hallie Julian on the other side, 21 kills in her three matches for seven kills per, per match. Not too shabby. And look at that hitting percentage, 436. Just a little bit of sneak preview. Anything above 250, that's pretty much all-star level. Hitting above 400. Only three matches in, still pretty darn incredible for Julian for Eastern Nazarene College. We also see those 11 blocks for Taryn Brogel. She'll need to put up the defensive work to, start, to spoil the perfect start to the season for ENC. We have a lot to go through, so let's take a look at some of those stats from the opening weekends of the season. Again, just three matches in for both these squads, but a 3-0 start for the Lions, 0-3 start for UMass Boston. And the big differences in those kills per set, 11 plus percent for the Lions on the right side of your screen, just over 6% for UMass Boston, and that hitting percentage, a big reason why. Beacons in the negative, that means that they've had more errors than they've had successful kills. 204 as a unit for Eastern Nazarene College. You start the season 3-0, you expect the hitting percentage to be high, and anything above 200 as a team is excellent. The assists reflect that as well, nearly double as many for Eastern Nazarene College in their first three matches of the season. The defense is fairly even, and the blocks in favor actually of UMass Boston in the early going, and the aces per set. We'll see if that really decides things. I don't expect it will. A lot of it is going to be the passing and the killing ability of these two front lines, as well as some defensive work by the respective middle blockers and outside hitters. Still more to come on the pregame show before we get you underway between the Beacons and Lions. But as I mentioned, this is not the first broadcast of the season for the BBN. We were out there last week as women's soccer started their season against Clark, a thrilling 1-1 draw with Lindsay Biscarin scoring the equalizing goal that got the point for the Beacons. And we take a look at 
those first match highlights now. An opening night draw for your women's soccer program here at UMass Boston. A couple of matches on the road since then as they will ramp up toward another home match coming up in the very near future. But back to the volleyball as we get you ready for this opening home match for the Beacons taking on Eastern Nazarene College as we take a sneak peek at what the Beaks will bring this season. Still getting up that, still getting that up and running, but we mentioned Really what the sneak peek is, is what this team will be. You have an interim head coach, someone that is familiar with the program at least, Calliope Dalavaris, who was Calliope Halagaitis last year when she was under Michael Houlihan's tenureship as an assistant coach. Trying to take things over with Coach Houlihan's departure, bringing in those underclassmen, including a whole handful, more than a half dozen first year players. And then on top of that, trying to replace some stellar players, Amelia Chapieska, Alex Kyoza no longer on this team, even some younger players, you know, Alyssa Ruan, who was a first year player last year, of course, Marcel Tiscareño, and probably most importantly for me, whenever you have to replace a setter, that is a tough task, and Carson Comments was everything, finished four assists short of 2,000 in just a three-year career that was, of course, abridged due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So whenever you have to replace a setter, that is a tough task. So Taryn Brogel, a player to watch, but for me, the player to watch really is who is passing it to Taryn Brogel. That is certainly not an easy thing to do when you are a new setter coming into any collegiate program. I don't care if it's a Division Three, all the way up to the Division One level. No easy feat to replace a setter. We'll have a lot more coming up now, about four minutes or so away from the buzzer sounding and our opening starting lineups being announced by my public address announcer down below us. For those of you who watched Beacon Volleyball last year, things look a little bit flipped around. Brought the bleachers out on the far side of the court 
and moved the scorer's table to the near side. So see that nice beacons a lot more clearly than you would have last year when it was just plastered into the far side of the wall. But just about ready to get things underway as you see the beacons on the court doing their opening warm-ups. And it will be fascinating to watch the first head coach or the first match under new interim head coach, Calliope Delavoris. But we will have those starting lineups for you in just a moment as it's the first broadcast of the season. So still working out some of the kinks and we appreciate you joining us for this non-conference matchup. Eastern Nazarene College, only about 15, 20 minutes down the road in the Wollaston Beach area of Quincy, Massachusetts. And yet, this is only the second time that these two teams have ever faced off against one another. UMass Boston took a trip down the road to Quincy to take on the Lions back in 2018. That was a 3-0 sweep by your beaks, but obviously very different teams nowadays and now very different starts to the season with Eastern Nazarene College coming out strong in their opening three-match tournament to start the season, taking down the University of Maine, Presque Isle, and Suffolk in three-nothing sweeps before knocking off Wellesley College 3-1 in their final match of that three-match tournament. Mentioned the Beacons were down at Susquehanna, or over in Susquehanna, where they took on SUNY, Brockport, Chatham, and Susquehanna themselves. All three matches were 3 nothing sweeps in favor of the opposition. Gave a tough fight to SUNY, Brockport, and Susquehanna, who's a nationally ranked team at the Division Three level. But Susquehanna able to take down the first two sets, 25-22 and 25-21, before a more convincing 25-12 third set. And similarly, in the opener against SUNY, Brockport, 25-22 in the first set and 25-19 in the third. And then a more convincing performance by SUNY Brockport in the second set, 25-10. But in all three matches, the Beacons really had two competitive sets and one blowout. And so it's really trying to put it all together in this, their home opener against the visiting Lions. But that is a tough task. Not a lot known necessarily about Eastern Nazarene, despite its close proximity geographically to UMass Boston. Just the second time these teams have ever met before. Eastern Nazarene College hailing from the NECC, the New England Collegiate Conference, which is a very small conference. Just a handful of schools as over the years, they've progressively lost more and more members, and then COVID-19 really did a number on the conference, dropping it down to its current membership status of just four schools that are full-time members of the NECC, and yet here they are with a perfect 3-0 and start on the season. They'll be wearing the black jerseys trimmed in Eastern Nazarene College red with the red numbers on the back trimmed and white. Beacons will be in their home whites with the blue numbers. About 13 seconds or so until the horn sounds as the fans continue to filter in here as school is just about ready to get back in session as well. So it's great to have students back on campus and we are set to go for our home opener. We will take you through the starting lineups in just a moment. But before we do that, the players will line up. We'll quickly take you through Eastern Nazarene's starting lineup first and then we'll go through the Beacons starting sixes. For Eastern Nazarene, Fiona Shaw, Telma Zalea, and Andrea Asituno for five and seven. And then Hallie Julian, who we already highlighted as the player to watch in that matchup with Brogel, Piper Bolner, Eliana Barron, and Amia Altman wearing 11, 14, 17, and 18 respectively. It'll either be Shaw or Altman wearing the Libero's uniform. With Telma Zalea doing the majority of the setting. Andrea Satuno announced over the loudspeaker she will be one of two outside hitters with Eliana Barron, and the middle blockers will be Julian and Bolner. Meanwhile, for UMass Boston, Mentioned so many players trying to replace Tiscareño, Closa, Carson Kaminsk, 
But Brogel is back, and she is in the starting lineup as the primary outside hitter alongside Dylan Wurzberger and Michaela Garrity, who will do a lot of things this season for Coach Dallavoris. Amelia Devlin will be the primary setter wearing number 22. Colby Atlas will do the hitting, as will Katie Rennie. Just like it was last year under Coach Houlihan, a lot of players in a lot of different spots who can all hit but also play the middle blocker positions. Taryn Brogel will be the focal point of the offense, but the key is going to be setting to her. Mentioned that key statistic difference in the opening three matches of the season for both squads was the hitting percentage. A little bit of volleyball 101, that calculation. It's the number of successful kills subtracting out the number of errors divided by the number of total attacks. So if you have more errors than you do kills, that's how that number goes negative. And we mentioned in the first three matches of the season, the Beacons with a negative .016 hitting percentage. That's because they have 55 kills, but 59 errors. Meanwhile, on the other side for Eastern Nazarene, an outstanding start to their season, 111 kills in three matches, just 49 errors. We pause for the national anthem, then it's time for the opening serve. Time to get the 2022 home volleyball season underway. You're watching the Beacons Broadcast Network on a Wednesday night from the great capital of Boston, Massachusetts. With me, Mason Stelf, on the call. 2022 season already underway with three matches on the road in Susquehanna. But now things really start up here inside Clark Athletic Center Gymnasium. Beacons and Lions set to do battle on this Wednesday evening. Mentioned the Beacons will be in the home whites going up against the Lions in the crisp black and red. Nice fan base in attendance as well. Home opener. It's also nice, as I mentioned at the opening, to have, at this time anyway, no COVID-19 protocols to worry about. So the players can be unmasked. And it will just look a little bit more like the old days of 2019. Feels a long time ago, but a little bit of normalcy returning to the world. Hopefully it remains that way. Allie Dean will be in the libero uniform in all black on the court to the left as you view it on the BBN. And opposite in the white and red libero uniform, it's Amia Altman, the graduate student from Butler, Pennsylvania, who will be doing a lot of the defensive specialist work for the Lions, who are led by ninth-year head coach Derek Schmidt. Clappy Dalavoris in her first year and really just first month in charge of this Beacon program. Mike Houlihan no longer with UMass Boston. Down at Johnson in Wales now. And so with that change brings a little bit of uncertainty, but certainly a lot of fun for this Beacon program and a lot of opportunities for these players who might have had an impression in the mind of former coach Houlihan to now make new impressions on their former assistant, 
Calliope Delavoris says we are underway. Beacon serving to start things and a nice defensive play on the back line to keep the play alive, but not for long as it's killed down up front. Opening kill will go to Hallie Julian. It will be a lot of Julian versus Brogel in the statistical offensive categories. However, it really comes down to the ability to deliver the ball effectively to those two outstanding hitters. Dean Diggs set up to the right side and blocked down that time. Wurzberger tried to force it through the block but ran into a wall of Eliana Barron. And it's a quick 2-0 advantage for the Lions. Mentioned in the three matches that the Beacons played this past weekend, they were competitive in two out of the three sets in every single match, but they have yet to win one. Tough dig that time, and they're just going to have to play it over without real any initiative that time. Cross-court ball outstanding from Julian. And that comes down to the front line not getting any blocker in position on that far left side of the net, which allows the outside hitter to just pick her spot. Does she want to go down the line? Does she want to pummel the middle of the court or go cross court shot as she did that time? Beacons will get on the board though as that service sails long for the opening service error. Tony Guerra, now in her sophomore season, has one of the longest trips to get home from Rancho Cucamonga, California in SoCal. Delivers a nice serve, but Eastern Nazarene does get it over the net. Brogel taps it over, backhand, and it works. Mishandled that time by the Lions, and it's two serving three with Guerra remaining behind the end line. Another nice serve right down center but with plenty of power on it. And then she does the defensive work as well to keep the play alive. And that one will find its way to the floor. Kill from Michaela Garrity, the senior from Elgin, Illinois. All these underclassmen and first year players, it's gonna be a lot on the shoulders of Garrity, Brogel, Livia Trinjaje when she's in there. Three all after a three point run by the Beaks, make it four back-to-back -back kills for Michaela Garrity. Garrity, 10 kills in the first three matches. And Guerra, a massive weapon on serve already. Gets a nice dig, punched over the top by Colby Atlas. Off the top of the block, takes the sting out of the kill attempt. Tough set though, Garrity plays it over on a nice diagonal that at least made the defense work again. Guerra having a crazy run of points, couldn't keep that one in as she tried to hit it to Atlas on the dig attempt. But still, three outstanding serves and some nice defensive work as well for the reserve from Rancho Cucamonga. Four all. Beacons trying to take their first set of the season as Julian serves cross court Garrity to the front of the net, short set up front, killed down by the Beaks. And that is Brogel. Beaks don't really list middle blockers versus outside hitters. They just list everyone as a hitter, but Brogel with her size at 5'10 will naturally find herself inside in the middle blocker spot a lot this season. Dug by Brogel but that wrong-footed Atlas and ran out of room as she nearly careened into the stanchions. Five all. Early going of this home opener for UMass Boston. Good dig, but that one is going to take the setter into the net. Amelia Devlin trying to set the ball, but the momentum as it was a tight set close. Dig was fine, but too tight to the net. It's gonna be a lot of setting from Dean and Devlin this season. That is the biggest question mark as Guerra was doing the digging there. 
and that is down the line, but it is out. Eliana Barron was looking for a touch off the right hand of the block and did not get the call and a little bit of exasperation for the first time on the face of Derek Schmidt, who's conversing with the assistant official on the near side of the court. They did put the point up for Eastern Nazarene, but that is incorrect. It should be six all. Ball was definitely wide of the mark. And now they put it up on the main scoreboard, six apiece. And that's well done. That's beautiful in-system volleyball. In-system just being that natural progression or what you hope is the natural progression from the initial service reception and dig. Passing to the setter and to what should be, and more often than not, a straightforward kill. That was not well done in system, and as a result, Eastern Nazarene had an opportunity. Lean back, and it's killed by Garrity, made the most of a difficult pass. And that's going to happen when you don't have Carson Commons anymore. You take it for granted when you see someone as naturally gifted at the setter position as Kamensk. Mentioned just a couple of passes shy of 2,000 assists on her career, which only lasted three seasons due to COVID. But when the setting is good, you don't even acknowledge it in a lot of volleyball matches. That's why I make it a point to acknowledge whoever the setter is because that's the player. When things are going well, it's usually the pivot person as the setter in the middle who's making that run smoothly. And when the passing isn't clean, it usually results in those negative hitting percentages that we've seen from the Beaks through the first three matches of the season. Trying to straighten things out. It is the home opener after all, so scoring is also going to have a little bit of wonkiness to it as everybody gets back into the flow and rhythm of volleyball this fall. That is just long, seen over the end line by Ali Dean who watched it out the entire way. Ties things at eight and then goes back to do the serving herself. Dean looking to progress from a fairly strong sophomore campaign where she split a lot of the time at the libero position with Alyssa Wong. But Ron not on this team, so it is going to be mainly Dean wearing the libero uniform for Coach Dallavoris. Dean from Portland, Oregon, attended West Lynn High School now a few years back. Delivers her second consecutive serve after a nice one, got the Beacons the last point. Two-handed pass over the top, into the net, and down, off the block, but inside the netting from Brogel to give the Beacons their first two-point advantage of this first set. But you see that short set up front, Brogel. It's an advantage. Yes, you usually will have just one blocker in the middle who's shifting back and forth. So if you can short set middle blocker, you can sometimes tuck it inside. That one's delicately passed over the top. Great kill that time by Wurzberger. Doesn't always need to be power. Sometimes the placement works just as well, if not better, and it works there. As the Beacons go on the mini run, take the 11-8 edge, and that triggers the first timeout by Eastern Nazarene College. We will take that timeout with them, come back in the next 30, 45 seconds with more first set action. Beacons lead it 11-8 early. The five campus UMass system is the university that educates the workforce of Massachusetts. We recognize that we are truly here for a reason. And that recognition inspires us and drives us every single day. Paris changed my life, and I got there through UMass. Those very specific seminal moments in Paris, the subway. A man in a tuxedo walked in, and a woman in a long gown. And it was stunning. It all hit me. It was, it was like a lightning bolt. There was this world of beauty and style that I wanted to be a part of. That was the beginning of the journey. And that all came through the University of Massachusetts. And that was really a key moment for me. That's one of those moments you never forget. The University of Massachusetts, Boston. It's just minutes from downtown, and the Princeton Review calls it one of the best values in the country. A nationally recognized institution of academic excellence and research, UMass Boston offers more than 150 undergraduate and graduate
Beacons leading it 11 to eight after the first timeout of the set called by Coach Schmidt of Eastern Nazarene College. That one was touched by Dean on its way through, had no choice but powerful down the line by the outside hitter. Gives the Lions their ninth point of this set. Beacons have been keeping this relatively uncomplicated offensively. Passing has held up so far and the hitters taking what's been given to them, whether it's the powerful shot in the middle, the delicate shot outside, that one Brogel off a couple of blockers through. Dean nearly double hit it. It does end up going into the block and down anyway and it's a nice response coming out of the timeout by the Lions as they've taken the last two points. Serve comes over right down the line. Would have been interesting if that one was going to be in or out. Bumped over by Chintaje. Miscommunication. Brogel has to hit it back. And it may just work out. Oh, it's a kick save. What a play. An absolutely crazy save. Telma Zalea. Just kicks the foot out, keeps the point alive. Couldn't do that again if she tried. Not that she would be asked to. Nice response by Jujaje. She just got the outside shot. And again, that outside block did not get there in time. And that's the bread and butter of any outside hitter. If the pass is good and the block is not there, just pummel it. And then it's up to a heroic dig to keep the point alive. 12 serving 11. Played over on two. Garrity backs things up. And that is off the block. No, they're going to say it did not get a touch. Just got a healthy heap of netting on its way through. But no protest that time by Colby Atlas. And so midway point of this first set sees us tied at 12. Serve from Asatuno. And that one touched down. That hang in the air by Atlas. So she switches sides on rotation. This hits the first one off the net and out of bounds. And the second time on the left side as opposed to the right. Touches it into the block and gets the point. 13 serving 12. Service error from Guerra. Julian again serving. Just a couple of kills and that is long. Barely looked like that one was just going to find its way onto the white paint. But no luck that time. Julian tried to pick out the ace serve. Does not have any this season. Zalea and Asatuno both had seven apiece entering this match for ENC. That is wide on back-to-back -back shots. And the Beacons have the two-point edge. Should be 15-13. No, they're going to say that touched the block. Definitely did not touch the line, so they are going to give the point to Eastern Nazarene College and say that there was a piece of a Beacon player that was hit on its way through. But again, not any real protest, so the Beacons were going to run with that if they were given, but correct call appears to have been made by the official in the chair. 14 apiece. Float serve. Dean digs. Nice set reverse pass. Dug along the back by the Lions. Nearly found its way to the hardwood, but Dean responds. Short pass. Good kill. Garrity again. She's used that to her advantage throughout this first set. Really haven't seen her rear back and absolutely smash one to the floor, but hasn't needed to. She's used what I oftentimes call veteran savvy to pick out the open spaces between the blockers and the two front and back lines. Punched over, mishandled. Can the Beacons take advantage? They cannot, as that was a short set. Short set in two ways. Short set to the middle blocker, which is fine, but short set in terms of height as well. 
and no chance of directing that one back into the court. We are tied at 15, back and forth, first set, neither team leading by more than three. That one will be killed by Trindadje. Almost made itself a home on the top of the cord, but eventually found its way out of bounds. Strong first set so far for the Beacons. The passing still leaving a little bit to be desired, but it's holding up through the first near two-thirds of the opening set so far. That is going to be a double hit. Was going to be too tight to the net anyway to make things easy for a return. So the Beacons get the point on the violation. 17-15, they have not led by more than three. Trying to get back to that three-point edge right here. Into the block and roof down. Combination of Trindaje and Rennie getting the job done. And you can see that shift to the right side from the middle block to the outside block leads to the combo. And it's an 18-15 lead for your beak. Second timeout, final timeout for Eastern Nazarene College. When we come back, Beacons try and close out their first set of the season. We will stay right with you as we take a look. And as always, you can follow UMass Boston and their athletic programs all season long at UMass Beacons Facebook Instagram, that Instagram logo a few years back, but it works just the same. Twitter, YouTube, and everything else. Stay in touch with your Beacons. You, of course, want to check out beaconsathletics.com for updated schedules and everything going on with all your Beacons programs. The fall sports, of course, men's and women's soccer. Got some tennis going on, cross country, and your volleyball team as well. Another full year of sports here in Boston. So we'll see what head coach Schmidt draws up. His team did respond well from the initial timeout. Got a couple of points to bring us right back into a tie set. But now down by three with Garrity back serving for your beaks. Beacons in the early part of the season being led by the five service aces of Amelia Devlin. Garrity had a couple of them through her first three matches of the season. Delivers that serve on the diagonal, and just as the Beacons have gotten a nice number of points on that short pass over the top, Eastern Nazarene College profiting on that one as well as Asatuno pulls a page out of Garrity's book for the kill. Doesn't always need to be a bludgeoning kill. Sometimes killing you softly works just the same. That one directed just to the right of the end line, out of play, and once again, out of the timeout by ENC. They score back-to-back -back points. Can they draw us level again at 18-all? That one's gonna find its way in, so they had to play it. Cut shot, saved before it could get to the hardwood. Nice pass, just again, a little bit of a missed time of the jump. ENC hits it over from the back line. Navigating through traffic, Sullivan doing the setting right now. Nice play. It stayed up in the rafters for a while. The house rules, everything that's up there, scoreboard, stanchions. If it were to somehow hit the basketball hoop, all of that is in play. Eventually fell out of bounds, and we are tied once again. Just over the net, Dean plays it, Trindade. Tried to poke it to her left. That's off the top of the block and down inbounds. And just like that, four straight for the Lions, and that will induce the timeout from Coach Dalavoris. So 18-15 a race, now 19-18 ENC. Beacons and Lions battling in the first when we come back. Celebrate the soggy shoes and the slow starts. Celebrate the lessons learned along the way. These are the wins. Not the shiny nail-biting kind. 
These are the last a lifetime kind. Something I discovered in myself is that if I have a goal, then I can accomplish it. It's a well-rounded experience. At a Division III school, you primarily a student athlete, so the school is really shaped around you developing yourself as a complete individual. It helps a lot that you have a family with your team. Just about as entertaining a first set as you can have for your opener. Neither team leading by more than a couple of points and is a one-point set. 19 serving 18 as the Beacons try and tie us up once again, and they will do so. Nearly kept alive along the back, but not enough on it from Barron that time to give what would have been a heroic pass back over the net any kind of a chance. Tied at 19, Dean on serve. Targets the back line, short set middle, and it's Julian once again. Julian and Brogel doing a lot of middle blocker work so far. But only just one max two kills so far for Brogel in the early going. Julian, couple early and that one big, as they are the first team to hit 20, make it an ace serve, 21. As this has been the point in these sets where the Beacons, when they've been competitive, have just been unable to get over the hump. I oftentimes consider the race to 20 and the race to 25 two entirely different sets. When you get to 20, only the best teams can close it out. And ENC has now scored the last, or seven of the last eight points to take a 22-19 lead in this first set race to 25. Dug along the back, but a little sloppily. Gives ENC an opportunity to run in system. Backline kill attempt. Dug by Garrity. Set up front by Sullivan, two-handed poke. But again, good look for the Lions, but that is responded to by Brogel, who says, if you're gonna come and bring that weak stuff to my house, no way I'm going to let you get away with that. Just taps it down, not even necessarily needing the authority, just using both hands and passing it to the floor with a little bit of conviction. 22-20. Beacons need a little bit of a mini run. Would love to keep this right there within two points max. On serve is Devlin. Targets the libero Altman. And it's played over. Again, the block was not ready. And so they use what I call no man's or no woman's land. That dividing line really just behind it that divides front and back line. If you can target basically between, you see that metal circle on the floor and that white dividing line, split those in half, that's no man's land. Critical point there for the Beaks. Splitting the L, targeting the boundary between side and end line, and keeping themselves in this set. Huge two-point swing would have made it four set points had they not converted there. But still, down by two. And the set points will come now. 24-21 as that one finds its way down. And you got the second time out, might as well use it. Coach Dalavoris calls it with her team facing three set points. And the officials just straightening one quick thing out is we will again take the 30 second break and come back on the other side. Three set points on the way as the Lions try and take set number one. This is the start of a two-week homestand for your Beacons. They will host New England College on Friday evening at 5 o'clock, then Cayuca College 
Saturday at 1. That's part of a doubleheader where they will face off against Maine Maritime as well later at 5 o'clock. Brandeis will be the final non-conference matchup at home on next Tuesday, the 13th, before they start Little East Conference play that Friday against their foes in the championship matchup from last season, Eastern, Na or Eastern Connecticut State. And they will travel to Johnson, Wales, in what will be their first road trip since their trip to Susquehanna this past weekend. So lots of opportunities to see your beaks right here inside Clark Athletic Center Gymnasium. Try and kill off the first of three set points, and they do. Feed Brogel in critical moments. And there was really no doubt where Colby Atlas wanted to pass that ball. Sets Brogel, and Brogel takes care of business. But still two more set points to fend off for the Beaks. Brogel to serve at 22-24. Gets it in, a serve! Splits the back line, and that's a great serve. Targets a little bit of miscommunication. Neither the libero nor the center back had any clue who should have taken it, and as a result, it falls down. Can the Beacons tie us up at 24? They can't, as the final kill by Maria Klarabuk takes care of business, and a very back and forth first set. Actually, not Klarabuk, it was Barron, who finally got the decisive kill. And the Beacons once again fight hard, but come up agonizingly short. But still, two more sets to win for Eastern Nazarene College. One set in the books, 25-23 the score. Lions take the first. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three. I did receive a non-athletic scholarship upon entering uh, school. I got the Presidential Scholarship, which was huge for me. I think there's more opportunities for academic scholarships in Division Three. I did receive academic scholarships. Just being involved on campus, being a leader, all those things combined kind of get me recognized. It's a great experience for me. Cheer for the stumbles. That he should have had that. And the tears that linger. For in those moments, greatness lies. There, you will find the provoked, the determined, the unified. It's in those moments that champions are born. The University of Massachusetts, Boston with its scenic oceanfront campus, easily accessible to downtown Boston, is recognized as a model of excellence for urban public universities. 16 NCAA Division III sports are part of the more than 100 student organizations that create an engaging campus life in America's biggest and best college town. UMass Boston, Boston's urban public research university for the 21st century. Division three allows you to give yourself to other things. Having that free time allows me to pursue the things that I want to pursue. Division three athletics affords.
You see the outcome of the first set, 25-23, in favor of the visiting Eastern Nazarene Lions. Two very effective timeouts called in that set by head coach Derek Schmidt. The first one to kill off a little bit of a run at the midpoint. And then the second one, when the Beacons were up 18-15, four straight points rattled off after that timeout by ENC. And they would ride it to a 25-23 first set victory. Team switch sides. Something that we haven't seen for a couple of years now. As a result of the COVID-19 pandemic killing an entire season. And then last year, the teams did not switch sides due to the COVID protocol. So we have that back in the game as well. Something I didn't necessarily think I'd miss, but almost took for granted. Teams switching benches and attacking the opposite side of the net. The NC starts things just as they finished off with a nice kill. And now serving at 1-0. Fiona Shaw doing the serving, and that is probably the most demonstrative kill we've seen in the early going. Brogel up there to equalize it. Brings Tony Guerra back to serve. Guerra had a really nice stretch of points at the start of the first set where she was serving beautifully and defending just as well. Beacons are going to have an opportunity here, but that ball again passed behind, making it difficult to kill off. That one again short, and Brogel has started to really take over this match over the last few points. Starting with her block up front and tap down, then the service ace that nearly got the Beacons back into that first set. And now a couple of really nice plays, killing and blocking up in front of the net. That is down to the floor. Would have been very difficult to hit back over no matter what. And so we are tied at two. Andrea Satuno, one of two players from Tecusacalpa, Honduras. The other being Telma Zalea. Both first year players, or, or I should not say that. Asituna, first year player. Zalea, a junior. But both attending the international school Tecusacalpa before making their way here to Eastern Massachusetts, as I mentioned. Eastern Nazarene College, one of the more geographic about as close as you can get geographically here to Boston in the Walston Beach area of Quincy. Now, it is a little bit post-rush hour traffic now, but still not very difficult to get from here on the south side of the city to Eastern Nazarene. who are up 4-2 after a couple of nice serves up front, but finally again, they feed the beast. That is Brogel, and she takes care of the rest. Only three and a half miles, 5.4 in a car, but 15 minute drive from ENC's campus. So about as short a road trip as you can take. So there are a couple of schools, particularly those on that Fenway Strip, where just crossing the street or going a block down will get you onto a neighboring campus. So, so many schools, which leads to such great competition here in Boston. Five serving three. Libera doing the delivery that time. Cross court ball, Garrity dug by the original server, Altman. And the Lions get it over. Missed jump that time. Nice dig. Can they keep it alive? Yes, they can. Garrity pops it over the top. Set cross court ball into the block. That one was hanging for a while, and Colby Atlas and Katie Rennie took care of it. Tried to be a bit unpredictable. Pass was right where it needed to be, but it was up there long enough to allow an alert front line by the Beaks to get over from left side to right and cover the pass. They try and pop it short. Good coverage defense. But that one sprayed wide, and it's going to be beacon point as there was no touch off the block. 
That was Barron that tried to get it down. She was the one that finished the first set. And what got a little bit nervy at the end, four set points, the Beacons were to kill off the first couple of them before falling 25-23. Whistle sounds violation, and the Beacons were out of rotation. I have seen that called a lot in the first couple weeks of the volleyball season. Call a number of other schools, and I've probably seen more violation calls in the last couple of weeks than I've ever seen before. But then again, it makes sense. Early in the season, you're trying to get on the same page, and that involves being in the right place when the point starts. And so it makes sense that early in the season, you're going to see a lot more of those calls as Trinjaje hits it into the net. You're going to see a lot more of those out-of-rotation calls now and probably through the course of the early parts of September as opposed to what you'll see in October and into November. And that one was going to find its way in, but with Garrity moving off her line, that left Dean to cover. And she reacted late for an ace serve, 8-5, Eastern Nazarene. Another ace serve. They're trying to pick Dean off in the back right now. And a really nice play by Telma Zalea, the other Honduran on this roster. Sees a little bit of miscommunication and then immediately goes right back to it. Back to back points give Eastern Nazarene College the 9 5 lead early stages of the second set. We have the upcoming schedule, so we can throw it up there. We'll stay with you through this timeout as that gives us an opportunity to look at what's coming up. We briefly forecasted it. But three matches over the course of two days, not, uh, not atypical at all for this time of the year. All of this will be held right here inside Clark Athletic Center Gymnasium. So you can tune into all these matches on Little East.TV and the Beacons Broadcast Network. New England College coming up first Friday night at 5. Then Coeca College at 1 on Saturday and Maine Maritime, the second half of that doubleheader, at 5 p.m. We saw two effective timeouts in the first set from Coach Schmidt. Can the Beacons have a similar result coming out of their first timeout called by Coach Calliope and Alavoris here in the second set? Mentioned the subpar hitting percentage through the first three matches, but you've seen firsthand exactly why it's not necessarily the players up front the Brogels of the world in particular, that are responsible for that. They're the last piece of the puzzle. Before that, you've got to have the reception and the set to get it to the players like Brogel to finish off the kills. So if either of the first two pieces don't come together, and certainly if neither of them do, the likelihood of an effective kill is slim to none. But that's what Carson Comments did for those three years that she was a beacon was serve as the pivot woman in the middle between the initial dig and she would take great digs and take them and make them perfect passes and she'd take subpar digs and turn them into acceptable passes to give the outside and middle blockers an opportunity to kill down shots that at this point in the season this year they just won't be able to do but it's a long season Lots of matches, and we already saw the upcoming schedule. They come at you like spitfire. So there's going to be plenty of opportunities to grow. But at the same time, it may lead to some growing pains nonetheless for your Beacons who pick to finish third in the Little East Conference in the preseason poll, but it is the preseason poll, and very rarely do those end up being exactly what happens over the course of the year. But it may not be as clear cut of a title defense as some may have hoped after that outstanding run toward the tail end of 2021. Nice dig by Dean, but the covering defense could not keep it alive. When that happens, it's probably the coolest way to dig a volleyball 
go full prone, just stick the hand down, upside down, palm down, and let the ball just bounce off the back of your hand. When your team can then convert a kill out of that, it's absolutely stunning. Speaking of kills, that's Julian, who watches the ball just trickle onto her side of the net and makes no mistake, is much like Brogel at the tail end of set number one. Julian taps it down with no nonsense. 12 serving eight now in favor of the Lions. Backline pass by Garrity. Julian again. Didn't get any blockers up front in front of her, and when you let a player of her caliber hit without any obstruction in front, gonna have a hard time defeating anyone, and that's a graduate student. Not only is she talented, but I talk about that veteran savvy as that one's out for a service error. But Julian, she's a smart player too. That's a, a, a level of smart that only comes from years of experience on the volleyball court. We'll talk about eight new first year players and so many underclassmen for Coach Dallavoris. That is not just inexperience, that's a little bit of street smarts and savvy that the Beacons just don't have at this point and probably won't have this season. That's going to take a couple of years down the road as these players grow into their roles and evolve as volleyball players at the collegiate level. It just takes time. Officials just trying to straighten something out. Now the assistant official talking with Coach Schmidt. The possibility that someone is out of rotation and the wrong player served. Or maybe just an incorrect mark made by the pencil as far as who's up and where we are in that rotation. But now it seems that we've sorted things out. And that brings Amelia Devlin, who does have those five service errors, or service aces, I should say, coming into the match to deliver that one toward Altman on the back. Good dig by the back line. Beacons had the look. Now we'll have to be back on the defense again. And that's going to be a violation on the net cord. Saw that net wiggle as the outside hitter went up. It was Asituno who I believe touched the net as she tried to deliver it over. Beacons outplayed in this second set, but only down by three. With still plenty of time to close the gap. Don't need to get it all back at once. That's going to be another error. This time it's going to go against the Beacons. Could not tell if that was because of contact with the net or where the ball was touched. Regardless, it gifts the point to Eastern Nazarene. Fiona Shaw, sophomore from Wittensville, Massachusetts. Serves Dean. They've really picked her out in the early going. And a block up front. Outstanding play that time. It was Zalea. Had some help there, but really got her two paws on it. Garrity will have to come in to receive. Played over by Wurzberger. And she reacts nicely to get a second dig on the same play. Increasingly more important to get these points for UMass Boston. Down by five. Longest point of the match by far. Opportunity set to the outside, poked over, but plenty of time for Altman to close the gap on the ball. That's gonna be tough. And again, gives the Beacons an opportunity to run in system. Neither team really connecting right now. That's a partially on the passes, partially because they're exhausted by the end of this point. And still we play on. Wurzberger played to the back, over on two. Beacons have it again. And finally, they run out of gas. And the crowd, regardless of whether they are partial to the Lions or the Beaks, give a rousing ovation as they should after what was a grueling point. But the Lions take it and with it, Extend their lead to six. And maybe justifiably, you have a rally that lasts more than a minute. 
and upwards of 25 hits, followed by a service error. If that's not a little bit of poetic justice, I'm not sure what is. Guerra to serve, down by five. And Beacons don't need to close the gap all at once, but really need to start taking two for one. They can't do it there. As the Lions back on serve quickly, trading point for point. Asatuno to serve, right side of her baseline. And she targets Dean and gets the ace. Timeout, UMass Boston. A lengthy run has given a seven point edge to the Lions. We'll take this timeout with you here on the Beacons Broadcast Network. A rally in store, or it certainly needed to be in store. Otherwise, Eastern Nazarene on track for a two set lead. I'm a Division III student athlete, and I know how powerful words can be. The term gay doesn't mean stupid, lame, or less than. So I pledge to speak up if I hear the term gay used in a derogatory way or any other homophobic terms. If you can play, you can play in Division III. I'm a Division III student athlete, and my teammates unconditionally accepted me as part of their family. So now I pledge to do the same for others. If you can play, you can play in Division III. What separates UMass Boston from other schools is the fact that a large percentage of students commute. For me, it takes two hours each day to go to and from school, but every second has been worth it because the students that come here are serious about learning, they value their education, and understand where it'll take them in the Volleyball players are certainly not merciful. If you're struggling to receive the serves, you can be darn sure that you're gonna keep receiving them. And Dean in the center of that back line, they have been targeting the defensive specialist hard, particularly in this second set. They go right back to her. Excellent dig that time by Dean. And look at that, it results in a kill. And now there's a lion down in front of the net. That's the middle blocker. And usually, when that's the case, again, this is not necessarily that type of contact sport. That's why it's tough to see a player go down like that because it's typically a non-contact landing injury. What you hope that is is just maybe a twisted ankle rather than something more serious in one of the CL varieties. But you can never be quite sure. But certainly, everything now eerily quiet as after a really nice play by Dean finally had that perfect service reception you saw beautiful in system volleyball from the initial reception to the pass to the kill in the middle everything went according to plan until that player is getting to her feet can't see exactly what the number is but very gingerly on that left leg, and we'll use coaching staff and trainer help as well as some teammate assistance to limp off. That is a player that's done some really nice things in this match. Telma Zalea, including a couple of nice aces in her last service rotation, but she is not able to currently place any weight on that left leg. But and you certainly hope that is just something that may keep her out for the remainder of tonight and maybe the weekend. More so than something that would keep her out for weeks, if not months. But the teams will retreat to their benches. And we'll try and recollect ourselves after a really nice beacon point was marred by the injury out on the floor. So the teams will retreat. That will trigger an injury timeout, which will stay with you for. It's 18-12, Eastern Nazarene College. Up top, trying to take a two sets to love lead on your beacons. After this, Eastern Nazarene will stay on the road. They will travel to St. Joseph's of Long Island coming up this Friday before they will finally return home next Wednesday 
take on Nichols College, part of a two-match homestand against Nichols and Gordon. That's just a very small NECC conference. It's just Mitchell, New England College, Leslie, and Eastern Nazarene. So as a result, they play much of their season out of conference, and every conference match means so much to these Lions. They won't play their first conference match until Wednesday, October the 12th, when they'll take on the Leslie Lynx. We are back underway. Brogel serving down by six. And Eastern Nazarene now still in control of this set as they win that point. But now, of course, their minds diverted by the injury to their hitter slash middle blocker. Altman serving 19-12. Beacons need a lengthy run to give themselves a chance at a comeback in this second. Cross-court ball, Dean's there, long run. Dean will slam it over, really nice play. Could have just popped it over, but why not? Down by seven, why not give it a go? And nearly converted. That one did not make its way over, but they're gonna say that there was a touch and the Beacons will take advantage. And a very disheartened Andrea Asatuna saying, where was the touch? I'll be honest, I can see right along the line from this vantage point. I did not see a touch, but the Beacons will take it nonetheless. Garrity to serve, 19-13 down. Nearly an ace. Will it make its way down? No, but there's going to be a chance. Dean sets Trindage. That's inside the net. Point Beaks. Really nice play from the initial serve. Once it got back on that side of the net, in-system volleyball from there. Reception, set, kill. And it's followed by an ace. Molina Sullivan serving. Gets the ace. Three straight for UMass Boston, just like that. It's a four-point match. It's three. Paints the back line. Picture perfect ace serve from Sullivan. Timeout, Eastern Nazarene. All well, things after the injury have swayed back to the Beacon's favor. They have the momentum, and they are down just three as we take this timeout. 1916, Eastern Nazarene, tail end of the second. This is what UMass Boston means to me. UMass Boston was my first choice because when I came to the campus, I saw that there was a lot of diversity. There's a lot of people. Um, here there is a lot of international students, so it's really cool to meet people from different countries, different parts of the world. I'm Julia Murphy. I'm from Canton, Massachusetts. I'm Olivia Murphy. I'm from Canton, Massachusetts. Well, we're sisters. <laughs> I play volleyball and she plays basketball. Here they have a freshman success community, so each major has their own community that you can join as a freshman and you take classes with them, you do study groups with them. So it was really helpful getting to know people in your major right away. So in health exercise sciences we have an internship at the end where it's so much better to have like an advisor helping you out. Like. Sullivan still on serve. And she has helped the Beacons get back into this set in a very short matter of time. But coming out of the timeout by Coach Schmidt, Lions respond again. Kill from Eliana Barron. She finished the first set with a nice kill and comes out of that timeout with another one. Now 20 serving 16. New server out there. For Eastern Nazarene, it doesn't pay dividends that time. Haley Wright was serving, but the Beacons go right down her throat, send it back up the left sideline, and get the kill. Tight once again. It was close throughout the first. Ended up being a 25-23 decision in favor of the Lions, and that's an ace serve. 
Altman and Wright get confused, and neither claims it. Volleyball sometimes has the literal definition of you've got it, no, you've got it, and then nobody's got it. Nearly another. Altman keeps it alive, but the Beacons are going to have a nice clean in system look. Trindaje this time to the jump, pats her chest. But that is a critical two point swing. Had a chance to make it 2019. Instead, it's 21 18. Every point in volleyball, a two point swing, but they are not all equal. Tight to the net. And a violation against the Beacons. Sometimes there is an invisible barrier, not just the one at the net that is obviously very visible, but toward tail ends of sets, I have seen so many teams, particularly young teams, when they are struggling to get that first set of the season under their belt, it is like a wall that they have to bust through the younger teams and particularly the younger teams in the early part of the season with a new head coach have a harder time busting through that wall. And that two-point swing has now turned into a bit more of a flood. Six set points for Eastern Nazarene. First one saved, though nothing the Beacons did on their end to do it as it's diverted into the net. And now Dean will have to somehow find a way to generate five points to keep the set alive and keep the Beacons from falling behind 2-0. Serve is in. Right goes reverse set off the block and down. And the Lions have taken the first two sets of this best of five match. Beacons had a chance to cut the deficit to just one. But that was all that Eastern Nazarene needed in terms of wiggle room to extend the lead, and they would end up taking it 25-19. We will head to break. Third set upcoming here from Clark Athletic Center Gymnasium. Beacons with it all to do, down two sets to none. People at UMass Boston, they're here because they know they can have an impact, not just on research, but on people, on their students. This is just a starting point. It only has potential to grow, and it has a big potential to grow up. You're really having a direct impact on people's lives, and you can see that now, and you can see that years from now. So I think it's becoming like the place that people want to go. What UMass Boston is able to offer to its young people it certainly stands out to that mission that was set right out in the beginning. It's something UMass Boston should be and can be very proud about. Fires and beans in. Moving from Turkey, it was a rough journey for me because when you don't really speak the language that well and when you don't really fit in the crowd, it's very easy to disappear. 
but I decided not to give up. So, and UMass helped me. <laughs>just about set to start this third set. Beacons down two sets to none. They have battled in both of the first two, but as has been the trend in this early part of the season, just unable to beat the opposition to 25, at least yet. The way they've played, they certainly have the ability to take a set or two off of Eastern Nazarene and make things very interesting and extend this match later into this Wednesday evening. It's a very busy night over the course of the LEC. We'll take a look around Beaconville in a little bit, but one match already in the books. That's Castleton at home against Union, falling 3-0, the Spartans. Clark and UMass Dartmouth are facing off in Dartmouth. West Con taking on SUNY New Paltz. That's in New York. Anna Maria up in Keene, New Hampshire to take on Keene State as we are underway in this third set. Beacons trying to take the opening point. Played over, bouncing around. Somebody's got to get it over. Somehow they do. Not sure how much they knew about it, but it works out nonetheless. But this will be tough to track down and will not be tracked down. First time into the match, Lauren Westland, number 12 in white. Now standing left side of that middle blocker trio. Westland gets rejected that time as Brogel went for the kill. They go back to Westland. Had to invert the hand, play it over the top. Long run, Westland again goes cross court. Cover play that time by Asituno. Long run, too much that time though from Garrity. Amelia Devlin's been doing much of the setting in the second and now into the third set for the Beaks and had a couple nice plays out of the outside but unable to kill it home. Southern Maine is up in Brunswick, Maine to take on Bowden as that's an ace serve. Dean can't get the fists under it to pop it into the air. Nice play by Asatuno. And in the late match, that one just getting underway at 7.30. Plymouth State up in Lindenville, Vermont, which is really close to the Vermont-Canada border to take on the Hornets of NVU Linden. One of the things you'll see this season now Vermont State Linden, as well as Vermont State Johnson and Vermont State Castleton. That's now one combined campus, all under the Vermont State banner, but the teams maintain their Division Three identities. They're not merging those. So, no longer Castleton University, but Vermont State Castleton campus. Nice cut shot. One of the attributes that you want your setter to have is that confidence to go for the kill should you see the open court in Devlin, first year player from Westchester, Pennsylvania, able to just take that, slices it with the inside of the hand and picks out the open court. Nicely played over on two by the setter. Garrity pops it on the reverse behind. Goes in, has some help from Brogel on the kill, or on the dig attempt. And that is miss hit. Low side netting by Barron. Certainly the most complete match that the Beacons have played so far this young season. Want to have something to show for it at the end. Heading into this long home stand as Guerra cannot Keep that one alive. That's that perfect spot. Dividing front and back line. Nearly impossible for the front line to get back. And the back line having to go full spread to try and keep it alive with the palms. Brogel. I don't think that made it over then either way. Either way was in net. So. 5-3. 
Eastern Nazarene on top. Trying to keep this one to the three set minimum. Take a look at some stats to this point in the match. After this point is Garrity. Played along the back that time by Asatuno. Reverse play, that is well too tight to the net. And nothing that Colby Atlas could do to keep it in play. But prior to that point, Beacon's being led by basically everyone with two or three kills. Nobody with more than three and basically no one with less than two as Brogel delivers that error into the net. But three kills for Rennie, Guerra, Atlas, Dean, Garrity, and Brogel, as well as Devlin. Two apiece for Wurzberger, Westland, Sullivan, Trindaja. No one with less than two, nobody with more than three. Barron nearly killed it. Guerra goes for the punch and can't keep it in play. And it's out of bounds. And just like that, it's 8-3. Eastern Nazarene, still tons of time, but trying to take this chokehold on the third set. But service error by Altman. Beacons as a team hitting 135. Again, if you want to know how to do the math on that is Brogel serves diagonal. Poke in the top, nice block. Solo that time by Katie Rennie. Gets a much needed kill. Just a three point set now. But again, you do the math on how that hitting percentage is calculated. As an ace serve by Brogel. Gives three straight to the Beaks. But 23 kills. 13 attack errors across 74 total attacks. So it's 23 divided minus 13, that's 10. Divided by 74 gives you that 147 hitting percentage. And Brogel, much as she did for much of the second set, has taken things into her own hands. And just like that, it's 8-7, four straight points for UMass Boston. We'll keep it right here. First time out of the third set gives us an opportunity to take a quick peek around Beaconville. Mentioned there's lots of things going on here in this fall season as we take a look and that's just Saturday. So on Saturday, you'll have women's soccer starting things off at 10 a.m. Remember, they play on the grass field behind the baseball field this season. If you didn't get the memo over the first couple weeks of the season, no longer playing, at least not this season, at what will be a very renovated BC High Stadium next year. So women's soccer will start things off against the Caltech Beavers at 10 in the morning. That'll be part of a doubleheader with soccer. The men's team taking on MIT at 5 p.m. that evening. We have double volleyball against Koika College and Maine Maritime at 1 and 5. And women's tennis will be the one team on the road. They'll be taking on the Wolves of West Con at 1 p.m. That Wolves mascot is new this season for Western Connecticut. They'll still go by Westcon, but they do have that official mascot that will travel with them this season. Brogel remains on serve. Four straight points and counting for the Beaks. Two players go for it. Falling out of bounds and keeping it in are the Lions. Beacons trying to tie this set at eight. Straight down Broadway from the back line. Asatuno couldn't kill it. Now Asatuno can't save it as Garrity kills it home. Taryn Brogel has done such great work in this match on the front line. Has really been mainly in a middle blocker spot as opposed to more of a customary outside hitter that she would sometimes prefer to be. But on serve, she is untouchable right now. And the Beacons have stormed back from 8-3 down to take their first lead of the set at 9-8. Right back to Asatuno again. Tough dig, tough set. And kept alive by who else? Taryn Brogel. 
That's on the line, and finally the rotation of Rogel ends as Dean will replace her. But what an outstanding run of serves, and if that one had gone out, it would have continued as she nearly kept the point alive single-handedly with a stunning dig along the back. Serving is right. That's off the block and out. Colby Atlas. We've seen some really nice pieces of delicate play at the net. That was not one of them. That's just rear back and deliver it with much power as possible into the block and see if they can handle it. And they could not that time. Got the hands on it, but couldn't direct it in play. And that's responded to by the same exact result in the opposite direction. Eliana Barron says, all right, you can hit it off our block. Let's see if yours can handle it. Same attack, same result. Trindage tries to go delicate that time. Good defense, double hit though, point beaks. It's been a fairly clean game. Just had a couple of double hits. One time the Beacons were called for being out of rotation. But otherwise, they have been consistently on both sides handling the ball and ball with pretty good efficiency. And as I say that, nobody handles the ball and ball at all. And it falls to the ground for a nice service ace. Garrity on serve. Up by two now, nearly three. Kept alive by right. Garrity, right place, right time. Poked off the block, still there for UMass Boston. Reverse set, Trindage rears back. Kept alive though, nice play on the right side. Dean digs, Sullivan sets. Garrity dug on the back again. And another long point, second longest of the match after the marathon in the second. Won by Eastern Nazarene. Allison Deaton, junior defensive specialist from Riverview, Florida, will come in as a serving specialist here with her team down by one right at the midpoint of the third. Floats it. Sullivan. Just knocks it into the sky. Gives the Beacons a chance to just at least prolong the point. My goodness, what happened there? Totally mistimed the jump, but it somehow worked out. And it will give me Eastern Nazarene point. That was a short set to the middle blocker that was completely missed. And good alert play by the outside hitter to keep the point alive. And an unforced error results in a lion point. Very rarely do you miss Chima jump so poorly that it works out. Trinjaje, right, reverse set. And somebody touched the net. And they're gonna call an extra hit on UMass Boston. Trinjaje just completely out of sorts when that one got shot to her. And now the lead back in the hands of the Lions. Trinjaje after a messy dig from Dean. Beacon still in the point though, not for long. Block wasn't there, split to perfection. Nobody was getting that. We lose our score bug for just the briefest of moments, but it's 14-12 Lions. Deaton serves Dean. Sullivan. And whistle sounds, and I definitely had the announcer's jinx as asked after I mentioned how clean this match had been played. We've had violations on four of the last six points. Beacons, however, will take the points however they can get them. As Dean back to serve. Goes short, nearly picks out the ace. And can't recover that one as 
Touched the outside block of Tonu. The first year from Irvine, California. Wearing number 11 in white, and that directed it away from Dean. Brogel, along with Sullivan and Tanu, in that front line right now for first year head coach Delavoris. Into the net, still there. And is this going to be four hits on the Beacons? Yes. Not even sure if that one was touched by the blocker just into the netting. It's a line point regardless. Who will lead it 16-13. Reverse set, Tanu kills it. Really nice set by Sullivan. That reverse set looks so cool. It is not easy. I use the word telepathic a lot of times to discuss communication in volleyball because as the setter, you have to know that the outside hitter is going to make that move and vice versa. And that's a nice play between Sullivan, a veteran on this team. Now a junior and the first year Tanu to connect on that kill. Beacons win the next point as well, and they're only down by one in this third set. Tried to play it over on two, was right. Unsuccessful, and it doesn't pay off as Wright tries to block it, but it goes off of her out of play. 16 all. Amelia Devlin on serve. Beacons looking for their first set victory of the season, and you get the feeling that should they do it, you like their chances of taking a fourth and forcing a fifth tiebreak, as they have been right there all match. That is out. Would have nearly been one of the craziest digs for a kill you've ever seen. Just trying to keep the point alive, but sometimes quirky things happen in this sport. The Beacons just barely get away with it, and then they get the ace. Amelia Devlin takes the good fortune and converts. Really great serving in this match throughout for the Beacons, and they turn it into a two-point lead. Timeout called by Coach Schmidt and the Lions. We'll take this timeout with you. We come back in one minute. The Beacons leading it by two, trying to cut the deficit to 2-1. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue. Beacon still being out hit percentage wise, an even 300, which is outstanding for Eastern Nazarene, just 167 for the Beaks. But mention they have served well all match. Just a single service error compared to nine aces for UMass Boston that has kept them in this match throughout the first two sets here into the third. And they're going to take another point off of a violation. Double hit against the Lions. Biggest lead of this set by three. And the Beacon coaching staff is loving it. They are learning this on the fly, just as their players are a little bit. Nice kill. Finally, the answer from Asituno. But Coach Houlihan electing to leave this Beacon program late in the summer, which allowed for minimal planning, if any at all, for Coach Dalavoris to come over from her assistant position to take over as the interim head coach. So she's just loving this new opportunity that's been presented to her 
for her first head coaching gig, and her team is giving the fight. They've fought through the first three matches, had nothing to show for it in the sets one column, and they are now five points away from getting a deserved set victory in this match and sending us to a fourth. And who knows from there? But as I mentioned, as that one finds its way down, I split up each volleyball set into two sets, the race to 20 and the race to 25. Getting to 20 is the easy part. Getting to 25 can seem like a lot more than just five points in the victory column. It takes some mental fortitude to close it out once you hit 20. That's the task that awaits the Beacons right here. And that... Not sure what the violation was. I think it was a four hit, maybe? I guess it just didn't make its way over the net. 19 serving 20. Tough dig. Played over on the diagonal by Garrity. Eastern Nazarene ties it up. And the Lion Faithful wearing red and black on the far right side of the arena. Giving a cheer as they have responded. Again, Coach Schmidt's timeout. Triggering a little mini run here, three straight. And as we head to timeout, it's 20 all in the third. there's more opportunities for academic scholarships in Division Three. I did receive academic scholarships. Just being involved on campus, being a leader, all those things combined kind of get me recognized. It's a great experience for me. Cheer for the stumbles. The heat should have had that. And the tears that linger, for in those moments, greatness lies. There, you will find the provoked, the determined, the unified. It's in those moments that champions are born. So, Beacons call the timeout. Now they need to respond as they are now in a 20-20 set. Brogel tried to tap it through the block. Defense was there. Dean, beautiful dig. But the set goes backwards, and no choice by Atlas to, put, to play it over on a line. That's why, no! It catches the line. Could not have been more than the slightest sliver of volleyball. But the run continues, it's four straight for the Lions and now it's four points away from the match. And the service error allows the Beacons to breathe the slightest sigh of relief. That is the ninth service error by Eastern Nazarene. Mentioned the Beacons just won. Brogel serving. Targets, middle back. That's misplayed. Did not make it over the net on the attempted kill from Bolner. And the Beacons get the little two-point mini swing back. Now leading it, 22 serving 21. Brogel, ace serve. Defense took that slightest step back and Brogel paints the line between front and back. 23-21, two points away from the set now. Altman, right, cross-court ball. Brogel there defensively. Garrity tries to target the back line. Good defense that time. Asatuno gave her team a chance. Set middle, short. Brogel can't kill it. Is there a lift? There is. Three set points. And the Beacons bench ready to erupt, not only as they hope to continue this match, but that first set of the season is within touching distance. Nice ball, nicer dig. Rennie had that gorgeous dig up front. 
somehow keeping the point alive below the net. They go back to Garrity. It's tight. Still there though. Guerra. And not that time. The long points have gone to the Lions and typically the team that takes the rallies takes the match. But this is where the Beacons have to be clinical. Take this in system and finish it quickly right here. Two more set points on the way. Guerra. Garrity, no. Double hit on the pass from Devlin. And this is why the race from 20 to 25 feels more like a marathon. And that's an ace, and we are tied. That 25th point is just excruciatingly hard to get. So we will have additional volleyball, win by two, of course, as Wright serves at 24 all. Dean takes it, would have been in, had to go for it. Match point on the way. Clinically killed on the right side by Maria Clarabuck from San Cugat del Val, Spain. And timeout called by the Beaks. Had this at 24 21, and now we'll have to fend off a match point when we come back. Having that free time allows me to pursue the things that I want to pursue. Division three athletics affords students the opportunity to, you know, engage in the other interests in their campus and in their lives outside of that sport. It allows you to just be able to do everything you want to do. I wouldn't change it for the world. I'm a Division III student athlete, and I know how powerful words can be. The term gay doesn't mean stupid, lame, or less than. So I pledge to speak up if I hear the term gay used in a derogatory way or any other homophobic terms. If you can play, you can play in Division III. I'm a Division III student athlete, and my teammates unconditionally accepted me as part of their family. So now I pledge to do the same for others. If you can play, you can play in Division III. Match point for Eastern Nazarene. Beacons trying to stay alive. It's going to be tough. Wright pops it into the air. Played over. Atlas darts back. Cross court ball. Garrity, no. It's down. And the Lions sweep. Five straight points. And the Lions take this one in heartbreaking fashion for the Beacons from three cent points to drop in the match in straight sets. Eastern Nazarene takes this final set 26-24. Beacons three really good sets of volleyball, but they will need to wait at least another two days before they have another chance to take home their first set win of the season. We have the post game coming up shortly. We'll take a pause. Don't go anywhere in the Beacons Broadcast Network. We'll have some post-game stats, some reactions, and for flip forward to Friday night's matchup. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Beacon Broadcast Network. Beacons lose this one in straights to the Lions. What separates UMass Boston from other schools is the fact that a large percentage of students commute. For me, it takes two hours each day to go to and from school. But every second has been worth it because the students that come here are serious about learning, they value their education, and understand where it'll take them in the future. This is what UMass Boston means to me. UMass Boston was my first choice because when I came to the campus, I saw that there was a lot of diversity. There's a lot of people um, here. There's a lot of international students, so it's really cool to meet people from different countries, different parts of the world. I'm Julia Murphy. I'm from Canton, Massachusetts. I'm Olivia Murphy. I'm from Canton, Massachusetts. We're sisters. We're sisters. <laughs> I play volleyball and she plays basketball. Here they have a freshman success community 
So each major has their own community that you can join as a freshman and you take classes with them, you do study groups with them. So it was really helpful getting to know people in your major right away. So in health exercise sciences, we have an internship at the end where it's so much better to have like an advisor helping you out, like telling you which classes to choose. People at UMass Boston, they're here because they know they can have an impact not just on research, but on people, on their students. This is just a starting point. It only has potential to grow, and it has a big potential to grow up. You're really having a direct impact on people's lives, and you can see that now, and you can see that years from now. So I think it's becoming like the place that people want to go. What UMass Boston is able to offer to its young people it certainly stands out to that mission that was set right out in the beginning. It's something UMass Boston should be and can be very proud about. We welcome you back inside Clark Athletic Center Gymnasium. A tough match, well fought by both sides, but ultimately won in straight sets by Eastern Nazarene. Take a look at those final stats. It did it then come down to the hitting percentage, 76 kills to 66, but that hitting percentage, 307 to 136, just too much for the Beacons to overcome. The digs were tight, the blocks were identical, the aces identical, and the Beacons had far less service errors. But again, the passing just not quite crisp enough to give the attackers enough of a chance to win those clinical points late in sets. But still, lots of positives to take away for a, a young head coach and a very young team who are just still getting to know each other, and they will get right back at it in two days' time. We take a look at that upcoming schedule for Beacon Volleyball. As we mentioned, it will be a three-match weekend all right here on the blue and white court of Clark Athletic Center Gymnasium. New England College will be first up 5 p.m. on Friday night. Coica College 1 o'clock on Saturday, followed by Maine Maritime in the second matchup of our doubleheader. All those matches and all matches all season long available for you on the BBN and LittleEastConference.tv. We take a look around Beaconville as well as it is a very busy weekend. We mentioned volleyball on Friday and then Saturday. Everybody in action. Women's soccer taking on Caltech in the opener at 10 a.m. Women's tennis will be on the road down in Western Connecticut and Danbury at 1. Women's volleyball in their doubleheader at 1 and 5. And men's soccer caps us off over on the grass field behind the baseball diamond at 5 p.m. against the engineers of MIT. Would not be able to put this together without this outstanding crew. Still getting to learn the materials and everything, so would not be able to put it on without them. And they did an outstanding job this evening with Michael Vasky, our producer, directors Tam Landry, Gina Albano, and Elena Albano, camera operator Malik Lorquet, Maddie Casford, Max Clifford, and everybody else on graphics, cameras, and everything in between. I'm Mason Snell saying so long from Boston on this Wednesday night. Your final score in three sets once again, Eastern Nazarene College three, and your beacons nothing.